been playing a lot of clarinet lately. I've been playing so much clarinet that it's threatening to eclipse the other musical instruments that I play and other musical things that I need to work on. But I love the clarinet, uh, a tricky instrument that requires some time to get connected to it. But I have something to say about the clarinet. Let's talk about uh, some instruments where uh, the octaves are the same or similar. And let's talk about some instruments where the octaves are not the same. The clarinet is an example of, of uh, the octaves behaving differently on this instrument. So I'm going to demonstrate something. The lowest note on the clarinet is all the fingers down plus a pinky note on the, the lowest key here. That's an E, which is actually a D concert, but it's an E on the B flat clarinet. To play that note up an octave is a big contrast. It, it's just the top finger and the thumb. An octave above that is the register key plus these five, these five fingers. The octave above that is also completely different from previous octaves. We're going to use these two fingers, the register key and the thumb on the back. So we have four different ways to play the note E on the clarinet. So that's a, an example of, um, of octaves behaving differently. But let's talk about an instrument where the octaves are all exactly the same. And that is um, not, not, not just specifically the melodica but any keyboard instrument, the uh, Steinway grand piano, a Hammond B3, uh, a harpsichord, a, um, a $75 Casio keyboard that you found on Craigslist, uh, and, and so on. Um, we have this, this particular pattern of black and white keys. And for this particular instrument, uh, not a big range keyboard, but we have an F at the bottom. And then and we got one up here. And then up here. So um, here's a A flat. That's this black key. Uh, you look for the three black keys and the one in the middle is an A flat. So for, for keyboard instruments and for students that are learning the piano, they, they, don't, they really just need to understand how one octave works. And if they can memorize this pattern of black and white notes and learn the notes, they just have to learn them in one octave because all the octaves are exactly the same. It's not like you go a little higher and it's behaving different as far as which key you press here. It's... Um, all the octaves are truly the same. Now, my primary instrument is the saxophone, and the majority of the notes on the saxophone behave the same when you push the register or the octave key on the back of the saxophone. Starting with the note D, which is all six fingers down, push the octave key, and you'll also get a D, but an octave higher. And that the horn behaves that way until you get to the, um, the third D. So when you get that third D, all of a sudden you have to use what we call palm keys. Uh, then the palm keys buy us um, four more notes, or if you have a modern saxophone with a high F sharp key, five more chromatic tones. Uh, and then also the bottom extreme of the instrument is different. We have to use our pinkies and some extra key work. Uh, to get one, two, three, four additional tones at the bottom of the saxophone. Uh, five additional tones if you have a low A baritone sax. That you, that way you work with your thumb. Anyway, that instrument I consider to be the majority of it. The octaves are behaving the same. You just have to learn the upper and lower extremes. Um, and then you forget about it. It just The D becomes a D up here that you play with your palm. 
Now let's talk about an instrument that we all know and love. That's the diatonic harmonica. The diatonic harmonica is a three octave instrument. Now a cross harp player might not think of a diatonic harp as being a three octave instrument because we have our tonic or root note. Most of us, as we play in cross harp, second position, uh, our tonic note is whole two draw or whole three blow. And we have one octave here when we go up to whole six. We have another octave. The second octave is up to whole nine. So a blues player may or may not think of the diatonic harp as being two octaves. Um, but for, for um, playing the harp the way the manufacturers originally attended, which was to play it in the key stamped on the instrument, uh, or first position. Then we have uh, one octave, two octaves, three octaves. There's the high C. Okay, um, and then in the middle of the harp we have this breath pattern. That allows us to play a major scale. However, if you tried to play that breath pattern in the first octave, so far so good, it's the same. But then it starts getting weird. That's not a major scale. So um, you know this already, but the, the, the guys who came up with the first tuning of a diatonic harmonica decided to give us the scale in the middle and and they wanted to give us a nice five chord in the bottom three or four holes. So we have uh, a C chord for the blow note and a G chord for the draw note. And um, they, they created a certain magic when they did this because uh, you could take a melody like... Not only have the chord on any, a C chord on any of the blow notes, but a player could be sort of a sloppy player, not even able to get one hole at a time. But if you could approximate the breath patterns and the rhythms, you could, you'll find yourself sort of harmonizing. The instrument provides its own harmony. Um, now, on the chromatic, it will, uh, in that register, it may behave some of the, the same as far as double stops and so on, but the chromatic does not give us a G and not a G dominant chord on the draw note. Um, so, as I already just demonstrated, trying to play the major scale in the lower octave doesn't work with that breath pattern. Um, and I'm not even going to attempt it in the third octave. I know it's different. Uh, but the, the point I want to make is that a lot of harmonica students have had the experience of learning the, the diatonic harmonica and they get, they get this register where it's like all the intricate bends and half bends, like holes one through four, let's say, uh, uh, then they'll work their way up to whole six blow. And even that is like, well, I'm used to playing the tonic as a draw note, but I got to make an adjustment and play it as a blow note. As they start moving past whole six, the harmonica becomes a little bit of a mystery. It starts behaving dis differently as they move up the instrument and behaving differently, not just blow draw patterns, but it will, uh, the, the pliability of the lower register, you know, the bends on holes one, two, three, and four, uh, are not up here in this register. Uh, and, and we have to kind of get used to then this, like a good exercise is to play the dominant scale up to that or down the harmonica.
right, and then start getting used to what I call the John Red, uh, John Popper register of the diatonic harmonica, right? But uh, the student is like treading cautiously as they move up the harmonica. It's acting different up there, and maybe they feel like, I don't know if I even need to use that upper register. Um, I've said all that to say that the one... I know that the, the, the chromatic harmonica may be viewed as, as a complicated instrument. Um, however, it's got this going for it. The octaves are tuned the same, and it really is a big deal because a harmonica student can learn... play that exact same breath pattern starting on hole five, and play it in a third octave using the same breath patterns. And if you're a blues player and you start learning how to work the slide to get the, like the, the blue note, the flat five, and you start learning some slide ornaments with that, bluesy note. So you're like... You could take it up an octave. And you're not reinventing the wheel. Um, and if you want to play more of a bop lick, it's a comfort to know that whatever you learn in one register can be transferred to another one without starting all over again and having to learn a, a, something new or a new pattern. Now, when I say the instrument is tuned exactly the same in all the registers, there's one note exception. So I don't know what percentage that is out of all the notes on the instrument, but um, it's a small percentage and it's a note that we maybe don't use that frequently, and it is the high D. So uh, in other places on the harmonica, whole four draw with the slide. That gives us a C. It's an optional C. It's what I call the slide C. Uh, and then we have it again up an octave. When you get to the top of the harmonica... It's not a C, it's a D. That hole is behaving different. So the, um, the harmonica manufacturers have given us a high D on that, on that hole. So there was a pattern I was going to demonstrate, but when I, my whole point was, hey, use the same breath and slide patterns. It's going to be the same. But this one lick that I came up with went up to a C, and I was using the slide C, and when I tried it in the third octave, it went to D. So I was going to play uh, So far so good. Went up to D instead of C. So some of your licks that you learn you have to adjust to playing hole 12 below. You have to play hole 12 blow. Now, I was poking around a couple years ago. I was poking around the Seidel Harmonica website. And I saw that they had this optional tuning that you could get. And, and I like a standard tuning. However, this was one change is they changed that. So that hole 12 draw with the slide, playing a B, push the slide in and it behaves like the rest of the harmonica where it just raises it a half step. They, they, this optional tuning can potentially give us, well, it will give us a slide C at the top of the harmonica. I've thought a, a lot about that. Like, 
I, I use a standard tuning because that's what I teach, and I feel like it's important to know the foundation, right? And I like the standard tuning. I don't feel a need to change anything, but that's the one thing that got me curious. What would that be like to have that up there? And how often do I use the high D? Do I really need it? It's a dog whistle note. Now, tiny rabbit trail here. I was at SPA 2019 or 18. But um, Philip Years was there and did a, you know, mind-blowing performance. And I made, I made sure to go to his clinics. And then I ran into him at the, the Suzuki booth. And I was having problems with one of my Suzukis. Could have been this one right here. Um, issues with the slide and, and a, another Suzuki, same model that I was having issues with. But he, um, he worked with me on the harp. And, uh, I don't know, for about 10 minutes, worked with me. And then I was talking about the high D and he, he, he showed me this thing where he says, I like it in a D blues cause you can go. It doesn't sound good right now. Probably because I'm trying to put a grace note on it. It's a funny place to put a grace note because it's not behaving like all the other grace notes where it'd be a half step. Anyway, I'm not going to play the high D anymore for you. Um, for the most part, I think it's an annoying note. <laughs> but here's the thing about the high D. What if you had a G chromatic harmonica? Then you might want that note. Think about it. You might want that note. So, that extra high note. Um, so you have to make adjustments. And then even for harmonica players, there's a discussion in the harmonica community about which, if, if you're a blow C user, which, I mean, I use both. If you're a blow C user, you've got two options still. Because hole four and hole five are two Cs next to each other. You know this. If you don't know it, now you do. That happens again an octave higher. I guess that's whole eight and nine. Um, two blow C's next to each other, and there's some dis discussion of uh, which one do you use. And a, a lot of players, including, I, I keep forgetting this guy's name, uh, the guy that did all studio work for the BBC. He's an old guy. He's like 91 right now. Older guy. He's an older gentleman. Um, he says, oh, I always go for the whole 5C. He's talking about he always goes for the, you know, he just knows his place if he goes on to the next C. Um, however, if you're one of those players that goes up to the, you know, the highest option, whether whole 4 or 5, you go to, towards whole 5, you got to get used to Hole 12, it ends. There is no hole 13. So that is the first and the last blow C in this register. And there is no draw C. This is the C at the top. Hole 12 blow on a standard tune harmonica. That's it. So, uh, you know, maybe you can get a custom harmonica with hole 13. That'd be crazy. Um, wouldn't, wouldn't want to deal with that. No. So, um... Just be aware, as a student of the chromatic harmonica, you could comfortably move uh, in, 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 in another register and play the same breath and slide patterns. Let's, let's even think about uh, uh, a, a challenging major scale in the key of E major. I consider this to be a challenge. Guess what? If you can play it in that first octave, going to be the same up there. Next next octave up, it's going to be the same breath patterns. So uh, anyway, be encouraged. Don't be afraid of the middle register of the chromatic or the upper register of the chromatic. I always, have I said this yet? I always equate the left side of the chromatic as being the beach. When I was a kid, I'd swim out in the ocean. I was like, oh, I'm getting too far from the beach. And I'd swim back. Um, and so 
you know, sometimes myself, I get a little bit lost in the upper register. I have to have a basis for for where am I and a, a ear, a sense of ear pitch where I am. But I can use the first octave, you know. Uh, I want to find an F sharp. I'll just... There's the F sharp. Okay, now I know where I am. A lot of times if I'm trying to read music, I need that starting place. I just need to start... And then I know all the distance relationships between the holes are going to be the same and so forth. The, the value of practicing scales is you start bridging the gap between the octaves. Um, so uh, one more thing before I go. Who wants to work through the Chromatic Harmonica Songbook by Thomas Bailinger? 50 Christmas Carols. That's my next thing. I'm going to release it's almost November 2022 and I'm determined to get this thing out before Christmas and um, I'm almost done I have recorded 46 of the songs demonstrations I just do demonstrations of the song I discuss a little bit uh, if 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 anybody cares I am honoring the print copyright. Nobody sees the inside of this book. You have to buy your own copy of the book. And uh, hopefully we can support this mysterious gentleman. I can't find this guy anywhere except that he's written at least 49 music books. So he's an industrious fellow and he's um, got a book of Christmas carols that I'm working through. Uh, I will uh, talk to you guys later.